Good evening, everybody. Let's all stand and join together in singing, There is Power in the Blood. Let's stand as we sing. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in of you in the service this evening. Uh, we're going to take some prayer requests, requests a little later on uh, in the service, but uh, we have a number of folks that we need to be praying for. I want to mention one, uh, Mr. Dan Berg. Uh, Brother Dan sat down here in the front. He is our elderly uh, veteran, and we found out that he was hit by a car crossing uh, the street pushing his bicycle, and uh, is really really seriously injured so uh, let's remember him in prayer and uh, remember sister Kelsey's family in the loss uh, of her grandfather and uh, so let's remember uh, that family brother Edgar pastor Edgar would you lead us this evening please in prayer Amen. You may be seated. I'm certainly glad to see each one of you and trust that uh, you will receive a blessing in the service tonight. I want to remind you of the seed line work that's continuing. And uh, how many boxes so far this week, Brother Kidwell? 65 boxes so far this week. So we praise the Lord for that and uh, accomplishing much in the assembling of those scriptures. And uh, we look forward to soon being able to send those out and uh, those scriptures going to Thailand and we know that God's going to work in hearts there. Uh, we're excited to begin our Sunday school again uh, this coming Sunday and uh, encourage you to uh, be here for the Sunday school time. We will continue with the 9 o'clock uh, service and the 11 o'clock services. Uh, we will continue that uh, so that we can continue to uh, separate out a little bit and uh, do the sensible distancing that we need to do. And uh, let's... Uh, uh, pray for our teachers. I thank God for our teachers. Let's pray that God will bless them as they begin that work. And then on Wednesday night, uh, our Awana will begin. Brother Robbins will say a little bit more about the Awana, but uh, we are excited to begin our Awana again and uh, training the boys and girls in that uh, wonderful scripture learning program. Uh, so we're glad you're here tonight. Um, 
I want to bring one uh, item of business before the church tonight. Uh, Sister Kelsey's grandfather, as I told you, uh, passed away and the funeral is coming up and uh, Kelsey would like to go home and be with her family uh, for that funeral and I would like for the church, if we would, uh, to help her so that she can do so. And uh, the tickets are very expensive, uh, flying to, uh, to, to Seattle. I don't know why uh, flying to Seattle, they would be expensive. I wouldn't think anyone would want to go there, but I guess Kelsey does. And, uh, but uh, the tickets will be about $1,400, and I think we ought to uh, give her a little, a couple hundred dollars to help her too. And uh, so I'm gonna ask if, if you would, uh, if the Lord would put it on your heart, uh, to give something toward that. Why, well, just put it in the offering plate either tonight or Sunday. But I would ask the church, whatever comes in, that we give it to them, to them and, uh, and then the church make up the difference uh, in that amount. So I wonder if uh, we could have a motion. All right, thank you, Brother Kidwell, and a second, Brother Montaigne, others. Is there any question on that tonight? If you're in favor, would, would you say amen? Amen. amen. And oppose no. I thank you for that. We, we want to be a blessing to the Mendez. We want to help them and encourage them. And they've been a wonderful blessing to us in the Spanish ministry and in our church. And we love them. And I, I hope that you'll express your love to them. As Pastor mentioned, our WANA program will start a week from tonight, August the 19th, and we're excited about that, 7 o'clock until 8.30 each night. Um, if your family is not registered, if you're listening online or here in the auditorium, if you're not registered, please visit eab.church slash AWANA, and there is a link right there, online registration, fill out all the information about your children um, so we can get them registered before the first night and make things go a little more smoothly for us. And then if you are interested in volunteering and listening to verses or helping in our AWANA program, um, and you have not helped in the past, but you're interested in that, please see me sometime soon. You can reach me by text or email or in person, and uh, we'll talk to you about the opportunities that we have. If you have served in the past, um, if you could reach out to whoever was over your uh, club, whether it's Miss Amy, Miss Becky, Miss Laura, Miss um, Bobby, um, any of those ladies, if you worked with them and they've not talked to you or you've not talked with them, just reach out to them uh, to find out where they can use you this coming year. But we are excited about our WANA program. ask that you would pray for it, uh, that we would have a, a good turnout, and that God would bless and guide us. Let's sing At Calvary now. At Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me. stand one more time and sing what a friend we have in Jesus. Join me as we sing what a friend we have in Jesus. i 
I invite you to turn with me tonight to the book of Acts, chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. And uh, I'm going to begin a message tonight, or I guess a, uh, several messages, uh, three or four messages on the book of Philippians. And uh, so uh, we read in the book of Philippians, and uh, you don't have to turn to there uh, because we're going to be looking at Acts. But uh, in the book of Philippians, we read Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. And uh, I want to uh, speak to you on the subject of the gospel and the church at Philippi. Now, uh, the background uh, for this is found in uh, Acts chapters 15 and 16. And uh, uh, Paul uh, makes his missionary journey... And uh, we read here in Acts chapter 16 of where Paul uh, makes his second missionary journey and he ends up at Philippi. Now, uh, the, the book of Philippians is, the Bible uh, describes it as an epistle, that means a letter. It's a letter from the Apostle Paul to the church at Philippi and it's uh, probably 10 to 12 years after uh, he had been there at Philippi. Now, uh, we don't know exactly on that date, but it serves to give us some idea. And uh, he's writing from a Roman prison to this group of believers in the church at Philippi uh, that, uh, that he as a missionary was responsible for establishing, for starting uh, that church. Now, uh, Paul and Barnabas had taken their first missionary journey, and along with them went a young man named John Mark. And uh, somewhere along the way, uh, John Mark uh, gave up on the journey and returned back home. And so we read in the Word of God where they are uh, preparing uh, in the book of Acts. We read where they're preparing again to go to the mission field, and uh, Barnabas wants to take John Mark with them. And Paul does not want him to go. And uh, apparently they had uh, some very strong contention about that, and uh, uh, the Word of God uh, gives the account of it here in verse 36 of chapter 15, and some days after... Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pam Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren under the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Paul and Silas now go and they visit the churches where they have been before and, and follow up on the work that is taking place there. And uh, as they go, they, uh, they come to a place of decision. We pick it up here in, uh, in chapter 16, and uh, we read here starting with verse 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout Ferga, and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, 
After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. They, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. And we'll just pause right there. Uh, Paul had come uh, from the east on his missionary journey. He had come from the east, and now he has gone as far as he could go to the west uh, by land. He's traveled as far as he could go to the west. And uh, so, uh, first of all, they decide uh, perhaps they should go north into Asia, or, or, or north, uh, into Turkey, and uh, uh, they, they first decide should they go south into Asia, and then they, they talked about going north into Turkey, and uh, the Bible says that uh, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go into Asia, and the Spirit suffered them not to go into, uh, into Turkey, and so uh, they came to Troas, and they've come as far as they could go, uh, go from the east, traveling by land, and there's only one way left. Unless they are going to turn around and go back, they, the, the Holy Spirit will not let them uh, go to, to the south, uh, to go to Asia. The Holy Spirit will not let them uh, turn north and go into Turkey. And uh, so, as they're praying and asking God, uh, what to do, they've come to a place where, uh, where they've, they've had to stop and a place where they've had to determine what the will of God is. And we look here in verse 9, it says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. They've come to this place and they're praying and asking God to reveal His plan. And as Paul has this dream, this vision in the night, he sees a man of Macedonia and the man says, Come over and help us. And verse 10 says, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called uh, us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracea, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days." You know, it is always, it is always in our lives an exciting adventure to follow God's will. To ask God to, to lead us and direct us and uh, to see God uh, work in our behalf. Uh, sometimes we never know what to expect. We never know what uh, God is going to do. Uh, that is the, the walk of faith that uh, we walk as a Christian. Uh, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And all of us should, as a child of God, we should live by faith in God and expect to see God work in our lives. Expect to see God uh, do things for us in a great and in a powerful way. Uh, we've had in these 38 years here at Eastern Avenue Baptist Church. Now, I haven't been here for all those years. But I know from the history of the church, we've had numerous adventures with the Lord over the years. There have been numerous people who have come and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and been baptized and added to the church. Uh, what a joy that is. What an, what an adventure that is to see God work in the heart and life of a person to where they make the decision to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. And uh, folks, we need to, could I, could I say we need to open our spiritual eyes and see things as God sees them. These boys and girls that we'll be teaching in Sunday school in Awana, how many of them over the, the recent years 
How many of them have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior and followed the Lord Jesus Christ in believer's baptism and now are growing in the Lord? That ought to excite our hearts as a Christian. I'm afraid that uh, we, we, get to, uh, we just get hardened a little bit. Our hearts just get, just get crusted over a little bit. And a boy, boy or a girl comes to know Jesus and follows Jesus in baptism, we think, well, that's just a child. Now they've got their whole life ahead of them to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And those things ought to excite our hearts. We've had, uh, we've had some adventures. We've had some uh, special services. I think of the day when we honored Brother Lance. And that, uh, that day just gives me God bumps as I think about it. And uh, just think how God blessed that day. And what a, what a precious, precious blessing it was to uh, our dear brother who spent so many years sacrificing and serving the Lord. And, and uh, we honored him. And uh, later on, God called him home. And uh, uh, what, what a joy it was. Th- those special services. Sometimes when, when the singers come, different singers come, and, and they just bless our hearts in a special way. Uh, we, you look back to... Uh, the last couple Sundays when the missionaries were here. And what a joy it was to hear Brother Jeff Bush as he preached the Word of God in power and stirred our souls uh, for the need of the gospel around the world. And uh, last Sunday night uh, when the, uh, when the uh, brother was here preaching and uh, just preached in great power and our hearts again were stirred. There, there are some adventures that we should have. We ought to we ought to see it that way. We ought to, to recognize that uh, spiritually. There, uh, I think of the children's uh, ministries and the children's activities, the youth outings that uh, have been taken and uh, the, the trips and the camps and the church picnics and the mission trips and uh, the supporting of missionaries and the sending of the gospel uh, by the precious Word of God that our hands have assembled. I looked again at the numbers that we've done over the years, and I think uh, my, there, there are some that just, they just do something special for me. When I think of the scriptures in the Kannada language to southern India, to a people who have never before had the Word of God in their own language, and what a joy that we had a part. We were able to put our hands on that and we were able to give to, to help send those scriptures and, and the Mongolian scriptures that are now uh, being distributed in Mongolia uh, to, uh, to a country that uh, it is a, a godless and without the gospel country. And our hands had a part in sending the, the word of God. Our pocketbooks had a part in sending the Word of God. And now the scriptures to Thailand, 98% of Thailand is an unreached land. It's an unreached land with the gospel of Jesus Christ. 98% uh, and uh, so many that will go out into eternity. What a joy it is that we can have a part. Do you see God's church that way? You see the privilege that we have to come as God's people and participate together in these, in these activities and, and see and understand what God has done. We look at uh, these properties that we have and uh, the buildings that we have and uh, to God be the glory. Great things he hath done over the years. And uh, uh, this, is, this is what Paul is writing about when he writes to the church at Philippi and he says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And he says, I make request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel 
And uh, this church at Philippi uh, began here in the book of Acts. It began as a, a, a brand new church. And uh, here in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, we read of some of the members of that church. I want to, uh, to just point them out to you. And uh, I pray that God will stir your hearts as, as we look at some of these uh, members of the church here. So look with me, pick it up with me on, in verse 13. Paul said, on the Sabbath day, we went out of the, of the city by a riverside. And I'll pause there. They'd been surveying the city. They'd been talking to people. And uh, if, if, uh, if we know from the Scripture, if we know the Apostle Paul, I think of, uh, of our, our missionary down in the Philippines, Brother Lacito Malonzo. Uh, when Brother Lacito was here, the last time we took him, down to the catfish place uh, to eat lunch after the service. And uh, I think uh, uh, Brother Dale Money maybe was with us that time. There was another, someone else there with us. And uh, we sat down and we were talking. And uh, Brother Lacito was not interested in our conversation. He was not interested in the menu. He was not interested in eating. He was looking around trying to find somebody that he could witness to. And that he just had that heart, and, and, and he was witnessing to the waitress, and he, he got up at the end of the meal and was talking to people and witnessing to people. He just had that burden, had that heart. I think the Apostle Paul was just like that. Everywhere he went, he was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, wanting others uh, to trust Jesus as their Savior. And so uh, they'd been serving in the city, and on the Sabbath day, uh, they went out of the city, and they got down by the riverside, and they saw some people praying. It says in verse 13, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake, spake unto the women which resorted thereof. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. Look, I, I love this next phrase. Whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. How, I, I wonder, can we imagine what he was speaking? He said in 1 Corinthians, How I delivered, I delivered unto you the, the gospel which I received. And he, he's speaking of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's telling this woman, how to be saved. Maybe Paul was expecting uh, to, uh, as he went uh, to some of these people, he was expecting to see that man whose face he saw in the dream. The one that said, come over to Macedonia and help us. God did something different. He got down by the river. And there were some women there praying. He began to talk with them. And this woman named Lydia opened her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and trusted Jesus as her Savior. We look on in this chapter in verse 16. It tells us here in verse 16 of a young woman whose name was never given. She was possessed with a devil. Verse 16, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Paul said, uh, the Bible says, This did she many days. And Paul was grieved with that. You, you get the picture. This, uh, this group is walking uh, they're going to tell people of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're preaching and witnessing. And behind them, here's this girl who's filled with devils. But she recognized that they were men of God. And, and she, she was crying behind them. This man cometh. These folks come to share the gospel. These folks are coming. And she just, she just wouldn't quit. 
And God's Word says, here in verse 18, This she did many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. This woman, this young lady, filled with the spirit of, of the devil, trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. God set her free. This is the church at Philippi. A few people down by the river who prayed. They're seeking God and and here comes God's servant. God sent Paul and Silas and others with him. Dr. Luke. God sent them to share the gospel. And Lydia got saved. They traveled through the city and, and here, here this young woman began to follow them. And next she gets saved. And is added to the church here at Philippi. Oh, her, her conversation or her conversion angered the devil's crowd. Oh, it made them mad. Uh, those that made money from, from, her, uh, from her actions, from uh, that demon that was in her. Uh, in verse 19 it says, When her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Now well, they didn't trouble the city. They troubled these men who were making money off uh, the unfortunate circumstance uh, of this woman. And uh, uh, they said they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude, verse 22, uh, rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And old Paul and Silas, they were so upset. They were so discouraged. Paul said to Silas, I don't know why we were so mistreated. And Silas said, I don't know why either. I'm just going to go eat worms. Oh, that's not what they did. That's what I would have done. That's what I would have said. But the Word of God says at midnight, verse 25, Paul and Silas prayed sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They were in prison. They were cast into prison. Their feet, their hands were, were bound with chains. And they sang praises unto the Lord. And they were witnessing to the other prisoners. And we read what happened. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. This, uh, this prison keeper, he, he knew what would take place if, the prisoners had escaped. He would be tortured. And he was willing to fall on his own sword rather than to suffer the torture that he would have to go through because some prisoners escaped from his prison. And he, uh, this, this prison keeper uh, called for a light, verse 29, and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, here's the church at Philippi. It's growing. It's growing in an unlikely way. Paul was looking for the man that, that said, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And he was looking for, for that to take place. 
And God said, you go down by the river because there's a woman down there named Lydia that I want you to win to the Lord. And he sent Paul and Silas down by the river. And uh, Paul uh, thought, why, I'll preach and some of, the, some of the leaders of the city might trust Jesus Christ. And a young woman who was filled with a demon began to follow him and cry out. And the next thing you know, she gets saved. And they find themselves cast in prison. You say, that doesn't sound like an adventure, getting beat and cast into prison. I think it was for Paul and Silas. They were, they were uh, like the others, they were rejoicing, counting uh, that, that, they, that they were worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus Christ. Would we do that? But they rejoiced. They sang praises. And now the keeper of the prison has gotten saved. And if, if we had time, we'd read on. And verse 34 says he brought, his, uh, brought them into his house and set meat before them and rejoiced. And, and his, verse 33 says he, he washed their stripes and he was baptized, he and all his, all that were in the house, God says. His whole family got saved. Here's, here's this new church. It's growing and the church is added to, and it is no wonder, as Paul looks back, he, he writes, Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. The church is growing. The church is is, is expanding. And uh, uh, the church at Philippi begins with the conversion of Lydia. And the next thing you know, you see the church meeting in her home and the church is growing. It, it's exciting, folks, to be part of the church of God, the local church. It's wonderful to have fellowship with God's people. We, we need, we need to come here. Uh, the church, you've heard it in the news, you've heard it in the reports, the church is essential. It is essential. It's important that we're here. It's essential for our children that we uh, meet together and teach them the Word of God. And uh, the, the, the church begins with the gospel of Jesus Christ and God's word always works the Holy Spirit always works in hearts and all that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ in the church if we do it with the right attitude the right spirit all that we do God will bless I look over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Paul said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by the which uh, ye also are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Paul's preaching the gospel. The church at Philippi began with the gospel. The church at Eastern Avenue began with the gospel also. It began when somebody got saved and folks started meeting together and they called for Pastor Rigsby to come and, and the church began to grow and God blessed and uh, God helped along the way. God has given us some wonderful adventures over the years. In the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we read these words. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be a steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul wrote to this church at Philippi, and he was concerned about some things in the gospel. He didn't write to correct them because 
They were do doctrinally correct. He wrote to encourage them. He wrote to tell them that he loved them. He, he wrote to build them up and to, uh, to, to help them along the way. And he said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, each and every person here tonight, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, each and every one of us tonight can say, He which hath begun a good work in me, in me, you can put your own name there, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm glad. I'm glad that we have the wonderful privilege to be part of the church of God here at Eastern Avenue. To be part of this church and to work together. Uh, there, there's some things I want to give you in the next two or three weeks from the book of Philippians that are simple but, but they're so profound. It will be such a blessing to you if you'll just follow them in your lives. I trust God will bless. Tonight was just kind of the introduction. Took me a whole whole sermon to do it. but uh, Now I could go on if you like. Uh, if we could stay another hour and a half. That'd be alright. But, but uh, uh, I think some of you are ready. Alright. But uh, praise the Lord for the example here of the scripture of the church at Philippi. Let's bow together. Father we thank you tonight for your precious word. And uh, Lord, I pray tonight if there's someone here that's never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, I pray like, like Lydia and like this young woman, like the Philippian jailer and his family, uh, that they might uh, make that decision and that choice to trust Jesus Christ. Or perhaps even right now, someone would pray and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know and recognize I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. I need to be born again. And uh, Lord, perhaps someone would just cry out to you and ask you to save them. Maybe someone tonight would say, Lord, I need a renewal. I need encouragement and a renewal. God, would you give that to them? Would you do that for them uh, tonight? We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. our church webpage www.eab.church from pastor callan and the family at eastern avenue baptist church may god richly bless you today and always